in most newspapers on July the 1st, 2012, it was published how the top hierarchy of the Swiss SVP Nazi party of the notorious Nazi Templars of Switzerland expressed themselves publicly on the internet about other human beings. I quote, the Nazi politician Beat Mosimann from the canton of Zolotun writes on his website that asylum seekers are bugs that should be disposed of through mass executions by the army's firing squads. Their immigrants should be finished off in Swiss concentration camps with a thousand calories of daily food only. The Africans are economically useless, strong pigmented ones. The helicopter attack should be used on immigrants who form a tsunami. Here you can read it all. Just put on pause and you can read it. This is going on in Switzerland. The situation is very, very bad. Well, here the Nazi even says they want to dispose of Muslims and that they are bugs and that the uh, asylum seekers are like a tsunami. It should be added, though, that a tsunami kills and that therefore these poor people who escape wars and misery are being defined by the Swiss Nazi Templars as killers. So here we see a situation in which Swiss Templar banks finance Arab, African and Asian dictators who rob the people blind and offer a safe haven for the stolen wealth at the Swiss banks. And when the victims of the Swiss banksters, in collaboration with murdering dictators, desperately knock on the door of the origin of their immense suffering, then Switzerland, the mother of all evil, gets mean and violent and even try to expose the victims of Swiss evil to the world as subhumans in all facets of the word. So here we can read it again. So there he is, he's um, uh, behind there's, there's the Nazi who, do, who wrote all these things. He's standing behind on the top. And they are protecting the Swiss Nazi Führer, Mr. Christoph Blocher. You can see him here. That's the big Nazi Führer, together with Mr. Brunner. Well, wasn't there a Brunner as a, uh, a camp commandant in the, um, in the concentration camp? I think there was. His name was Alois Brunner. So Beat Mosiman says that Muslims are bugs that should be exposed of and Alexander Muller makes an appeal for violence and urges a national crystal night against mosques just as the Nazis burn all synagogues. Hermann Ley even has a website by the name of Adolf-Hitler.ch These three Nazi leaders are close friends to the notorious Swiss Nazi Führer, Blocher and Tony Brunner. There we go. You can all read that here. The Swiss Nazi Beat Mosiman owns a security company called BMP Security, enabling him to be close friends with the Swiss Nazi police and the Swiss Nazi Justice Department, who of course don't do a thing against this, as all key positions in Swiss society are being occupied by members of the Swiss SVP Nazi Party. And of course these Nazis blame it all on the Jews again, as they did in 1923 when they fin financed Adolf Hitler in order to get rid of the Jews and the biggest competition to Swiss to the Swiss Templar banks. I already told you in one of my other videos that when an entire country represents foreigners and other ethnic minority as black sheep, rats, crows and all sorts of animals in the streets and media, then far more worse things are being prepared for 
or already happen behind the screens. Well, we can see it happening now. So please somebody do something before it's too late. And please somebody, someone help and stop the incessant terror already going on for 15 years by the Swiss Nazi, Nazi state of Switzerland on me and my family. Here's another witness of the well-organized Swiss Nazi terror, where the Swiss Nazi Templar police tells me to leave Switzerland and abandon my wife and children. What authority does a policeman have to say these criminal things, thus expressing the terror which is inhibited in the Swiss national conscience? A couple of months later, this uh, aggressive policeman, he got shot. So thank God he's not there anymore to hurt any other people again. There we can see Mr. Rudolf Kuni. He was a corrupt, lying, aggressive and very dangerous policeman. I mean all key positions in the Swiss society are being occupied by the SVP Nazis. And he's one of them. Here we can read it in French how the Swiss Nazis do an appeal for violence, murder, mass executions and um, uh, racism, killing other people. So it, uh, here's in French, yeah? so it needs a military intervention by the Allies and the international community because Swiss Nazism has an enormous influence on the international world of Nazis. Swiss Nazism is very different and far more sophisticated due to its hidden character than German Nazism is. This is how Swiss Nazism survived World War II because in fact Swiss Nazism originates from the organization of the Templars. Here we can read it all. I mean this is what I want to do. This is what I openly say. And again, all key positions in the Swiss society as police and justice department are occupied by these Nazis. And they do terrorize and kill and torture. So see the Pharaoh show for more. I hope that God watches YouTube. Because an estimated 4 million Swiss are ready to build concentration camps and extinguish real human beings and their children in there as we just could have read. And the cowards are just waiting for the right moment, the moment on which the world doesn't look. Well, the Germans won't do it for them this time. So the Swiss can't keep it inside anymore, eagerly awaiting the happy moment of releasing their inhibited hatred for the world. So in the meantime, they tortured and murdered and terrorized a whole lot of immigrants in Swiss torture detention centers please world don't look away this time so here he is mr blocher he's the uh the famous swiss nazi fuhrer and here we can read it all in french or what the swiss are planning well it doesn't look good I hope God is watching YouTube. This is a Swiss supermarket bag and it says Swiss flowers give longer joy. Well, what about the other flowers? Don't they give any joy from which are not Swiss? Everywhere you go in this country, you have to see how superior the Swiss are. They show it everywhere. You have to walk around with it like this. And here it says, Switzerland, of course. And it can also be translated through Switzerland naturally. Wow. Nice Switzerland. Eh? Naturally. 
And what about a nice small well, smile? Well, here is your Swiss joy. It's May 2013 and here in the criminal state of Octogon, Switzerland, the Empire of Darkness, the Swiss Nazi people are openly expressing their hatred towards other races and other religions, accusing the entire Negro race and all members of the Muslim religion as thieves and parasites, riding the Swiss people thus including and portraying the US president and his family as well as a thief and parasite as Mr. Hussein Obama is probably both a Muslim and a man with a brown skin. Here riding at the back of Swiss Helvetia, who is the Swiss Isis equivalent with the same seven-pointed Isis crown, the Whore of Babylon. And she she even has a pair of uh, pharaonic sandals. These racist images of the Swiss Nazi people give further proof of what a bold pack of hypocrite liars these Swissies really are, because it's rather the opposite, and the Swissies with their banks riding the US taxpayer and all the African Muslim and Middle Eastern dictators by giving the opportunity to hide the stolen wealth and entire national product from Muslims and Africans in a Swiss cave or Swiss bank account. So who's riding whom here? And who are in fact the real parasites? The Swiss always boldly turn the truth around and another part of the big octogon lie is that there is no real left-wing movement in Switzerland. They are all right-wingers just pretending to be no different from other countries and the Swiss Nazi police and Nazi judiciary are, do absolutely nothing against the outrageous criminal and racist energies uh, developed by the entire Swiss Nazi people. The Swiss don't abide any law, not even their own. So dear Mr. Obama, bro, this is a direct provocation to you and the entire world. And if the Swiss Nazi people are ready to provoke the US president in the open and accuse him of being a thief and a parasite, can you imagine the crimes against humanity these Swissies perpetrate in their torture detention centers and the three big concentration camps they're building right now? The perpetrators of these racist attacks are the young SVP Nazi party, uh, which is something like the Hitler Youth, or probably even worse. This is Octogon, Switzerland, by the Templars, the enemy of mankind, also called the Beast. Switzerland, the Beast with their banks, their racism, their hate, their Nazism, Switzerland the beast, and this is what John saw in the revelations. Well, stop these criminals with their yellow long teeth. See the Pharaoh show for more. And see Octogon the Empire of Darkness for more. So this is an article of August 7, 2013, the very same day as Mr. Sean Ross of the Pharaoh show uh, met this very aggressive Swiss in the swimming pool. So this is the background story, what's really going on and why they acted like that against Mr. Ross. You see, they have new apartheid laws in Swiss swimming pools that if you're a foreigner, an immigrant, you're gonna have problems. The Swiss have a lot of silent laws and um, um, they even do it out in the open now. So here you can read the whole story. Well, there's much more going on in the German speaking, Swiss German speaking newspapers. So just punch pause and you can read it. 
So this is the real reason of the um, the Swiss um, getting angry at Mr. Sean Ross. This is the background story of what's, what's going on at the moment in Switzerland. They have a new set of racist laws and against people who are from foreign countries who cannot go into swimming public swimming pools and uh, this is what's happening at the moment. These are apartheid rules in Swiss swimming pools. You see? That's it. Swimming pools. In Swiss swimming pools. You are prohibited, if you're an immigrant, prohibited to come into a Swiss swimming pool. Even if your wife and children are in there. So this is what's going on. So here's a newspaper article from August 8th, that was yesterday, 2013. Oprah Winfrey, she went to Zurich and just read what happened. So they, the Swiss invented the Ku Klux Klan. They gave 10, at least 10,000 Red Cross passports to real war criminals and Nazis after the Second World War and they murdered a lot of immigrants here through torture so anyone who wants to know more just see my videos and watch the O2T torture and watch the Zurich files so this is the Swiss swimming pool affair and this is why they almost attacked Mr. Sean Ross thank God he didn't stay to watch uh, for the police to come because that wouldn't be good they just lie something together and put you in prison. This is what they do. And they all work together. These Swiss. They hide it. They, um, the police. The justice department. They're all a bunch of Nazis. And a bunch of filthy liars they are. They're absolutely. They're as cold as reptilians. They only think about making money. And more money. And more money. And this is a, uh, this is a perfect dictatorship. They've been doing it for thousands of years and not only against other colored people of other races before they did it against the Europeans and the European race they terrorized Europe with their mercenaries with the Templars as this country was founded by the Templars watch the Pharaoh show so this is going on in Switzerland and this is just the tip of the iceberg this is you don't know what's going on here well, thank you, dear Oprah Winfrey, um, for letting the world know, because they listen to you. Nobody will listen to me. I'm just, I'm just a stupid immigrant. Yeah. Thank you, Oprah. Code O2T is the deprivation of oxygen to a near life-threatening degree which is the easiest to regulate in order to create slow death lift so I'll just punch pause if you want to read it there you go just punch pause this is what they're doing in Switzerland the home of the Templars Octagon I just got a package from the US from a great YouTuber. Look how it was opened. Look, they just cut into it and they put the tape on it here. Look, you see the Swiss cross here. Uh, I've got absolutely no privacy. They can, these Swiss Nazis, they control everything. My whole life is being controlled here. I cannot go out alone anymore. Look, package. They just open it and look into it. Well, that's Switzerland. Look, yeah. Swiss cross on it. They retaped it. It's a, it's a uh, it's a complete dictatorship here. A Nazi, a Swiss Nazi octagon dictatorship. They just open up my packages. Usually, it doesn't even get to me. They just steal it. Well, I tell you, the Swiss are very big thieves. They stole a lot of things of us. And, uh, well, they probably stole some things out of here as well. 
Well, that's Switzerland, folks. So there was a, this was a great YouTuber who sent me this. Thanks, mate. It's really nice to see that there are some people who keep the promises. There's not made it, not very many of them. So this is this is a Swiss train. It says in 24 languages here, uh, welcome. Uh, but in small letters, it certainly says somewhere, but only for the rich people not for asylum seekers and immigrants they are not welcome so this is typically the swiss attitude they show it in the train like for the tourists oh you're welcome you're welcome you know if you come with a backpack with no money and your skin color doesn't match the swiss idea then uh, yeah, you're certainly not welcome and this they don't write it down you know they hide it as they hide everything in switzerland switzerland they're handing out 10,000 red cross passports to nazi war criminals this is probably from a concentration camp this one here the deal is of death Only a reptilian would make reptilian money on the bills and put his own face on the bill. Isn't that so? The Swiss 50 francs green in the reptilian color. Reptilian money. I apologize to you all for showing you these boring problems considering 16 years of organized states terror on me and my family but there's a real need for showing some of the evidence and let the world know about the terrible things happening here i hope it weighs out with the more exciting videos i offer to you which couldn't have been made without this incessant terror organized swiss crime and violence against me and my family through which i was enabled to analyze switzerland the heart of evil I suppose this is the real, the true essence of being a martyr. I'm not a religious person, but well, I hope you all accept my humble apology for being forced to show you all my daily worries caused by this pure evil. I honestly wished I didn't have to portray and exhibit my private life and that of my family here on YouTube and on social media. It's not funny at all to have your privacy being blowing out in the wind for all to see. And together with all the terror, this is quite hard. But I see no other way as the system fails for its corruption and Nazi ideologies of Swiss politics prevailing. And the EU, the European Community, the, a the Human Rights and the United Nations are just a joke that they let it happen. So here we can see the... Um, the party's newspaper of the Swiss uh, People's Party. Charming, isn't it? But even this is forbidden in the Swiss dictatorship. You're not allowed to talk about Swiss crime and terror and criticizing the clean, innocent and neutral Swiss is entirely out of the question and gets punished with more organized Swiss terror as we can see here, where in fact all I do is beg the world to make the Swiss stop their terror, violence and abuse against me and my family and show the world at least what's going on. But this only brings out even more terror and more Swiss violence who even come and ring at the door to hit me and physically aggress me only because they can't find me outside anymore. Because for the last two years, I didn't go out alone anymore. And sometimes was confined in this Swiss house arrest like two or three months in a row. And now I don't even dare to go out on the balcony anymore. With these Swiss Nazis roaming around the house 
to get me just in time for the trial next week on November the 26th and 27th of 2013. We can all see here in these documents, which I'll, I'll show you later, how they survey all next videos I make on YouTube. So they have seen the video a few, a few weeks ago where the Swiss Nazi comes and hits me. Well, no Swiss police nor judiciary responded to that one and it's okay with them that my children 11 years old and almost two years one year old not even two years were crying out of fear and terror and misery and swiss violence yes my children were crying and they have to live through this for 16 years now but that's okay with the Swissies, eh? But if I would have defended myself, then the Swiss authorities would have been all crawling over me in that very case, which I had to experience before, when I didn't know the laws of Switzerland yet, their set of silent laws, that is. And the entire Swiss people agrees with all this, as they always did and always will. And all Swiss know they're always right in front of a court when a Swiss hits and aggresses an immigrant. And every single Swiss knows that in that very case, as shown here, they'll have the Swiss police on their side, who only intervene in the reversed case when a foreigner defends himself and hits the aggressive Swiss back. Then the Swiss Nazi police will come with 10 police cars, ballistic jackets on, an overkill load of guns and shove the foreigner into the boogie house at the end. Look, in these Swiss Nazi newspapers, they only talk about how clean the Swiss are and how terrible and, and criminal the foreigners are. That's all they talk about, really. That's all. Well, I know how they make criminals here between brackets. Look, th this is Nazi propaganda. This is out of the 30s and the 20s and that was Swiss made from the start. The Germans are not even like that. Like with fear and financing Mr. Hitler, they had the Germans go crazy. Well, a part of them, most of them, they didn't even want Mr. Hitler. It's all Swiss made. Look, all, the, all these newspapers, all the time they're sending them in the, in the mailbox, you know, there's loads of them. And all this propaganda about all, criminal, all, all criminals are foreigners and, well, we, we could see it, you know. They come and hit me at the door because they don't find me anymore outside. And they don't do a thing. They look at all my videos, you know, and they, they, they don't do a thing. So, we can see how they make criminals here. This is not a, cre uh, this is not a cl clean country. This is, this is Mr. Mr. the next Mr. Hitler now here in Switzerland. And they're very dangerous, these Swiss. They have an enormous impact on uh, our European Nazis. Because the Swiss, they say, well, use the uh, the system and the democracy as they told Mr. Hitler well he used the democracy and when he got hold of the system the, uh, the judiciary the politics the the police department the army well we all know what happened eh? and it's happening here yeah Talking about justice. Well, how, how dare they? How dare they talk about justice? I've been patient here for 16 years. And I still will be. Was bin ich, was flippt, was mache ich? Sie sind nicht als Mieter hier. Ja, und? Ja. Und weiter? Und wenn Sie Probleme machen, fliegen Sie. Ich mache keine Probleme. Mal. Das sind hier drei kleine Kinder und da wird hier nichts gefeilt und geschweißt. Haben Sie das verstanden? Die Kinder müssen die haben nicht Ferien. rauskommen. Die können aus der Tür. Also, das ist die Haustür. Ich, äh, Sie meinen, ich... unsere Kinder dürfen nicht raus. Mach jetzt das weg. Well, 
Well, here's some more of the things they're lying together, you know, just to get criminals in, pr in prison to, for politics, you know, as we've just seen in these Nazi newspapers. I only talk about it. So the first thing, Nottingham, well, I don't even know what that is. I'm not even getting out of the house, for God's sake, for the last two years. So how could I have done anything wrong? And that says, öffentliche Aufforderung zu verbrechen oder Gewalttätigkeit. That means an appeal for violence. You just saw the newspaper and how they exhibit uh, other races and people in the streets here and how they talk the Swiss with, with other Nazi groups. They do this appeal for violence and I don't do these things. The only thing I did in 2001, well that's 13 years ago, do you hear me Swissies? That's 13 years ago, I wrote a letter to a man, a father, Mr. Ercoué in France and he had a son and a wife. The son had a wife and they had a baby who was three months old. The Swiss followed them. They lied some stuff together, as they always do. And they shot him, not only in Switzerland, not in Switzerland, but they shot him in France. With 18 bullets, three in the back. The baby almost got a couple of the bullets and they didn't even get punished because the Freemasons in France, they got the orders from the Swiss Templars and they never got punished. So. What I do, I appeal against violence. I, I, I wrote to this poor father who got completely destroyed by uh, seeing his son losing his life like this. And I never made any appeal for violence. You, you can see how, what a bold liars these Swiss are. They just turn things around. They kill somebody on almost a baby. And then they say the other, the other ones who talk about it, they are violence. Me, Sean Ross, I appeal against violence, you Swiss liars. Then it says Rassendiskriminierung, it means racial discrimination. Well, I mean, what, what should I say? Did any one of you hear me anything say bad against other races? Did I? Never. I hate these sort of things. And you can all see what the Swiss do here, how they hate other races, how they show black sheep and, and, and other races as all sorts of animals in the street. How dare they say this? The Swiss are the racists, not me. I hate these sort of things, you Swiss liars. And the other thing, Anmassen eines akademischen Titels. It means having used an academical title, like doctor, uh, without being a doctor. Well, I, I tell you, I don't have any papers, you know, so I, they already terrorized me for not having any papers for more than 10 years here. 14 years to be exact. So, um, uh, uh, actually, uh, I, I don't want to discuss it now if I am really a doctor or not. It doesn't matter. Because uh, I use, I never use the word doctor only alone. And I never work with it. So if you don't work with it, you know, it's not a criminal act anyway. So I only said Dr. SDF, and that's French, it means sans domicile fixe. And that was a, a nickname uh, of, because I was a homeless for many years in France. And the other homeless because I was always studying and reading and I didn't drink any alcohol as the rest. I never took any drugs. Uh, before I got tortured, I never drank any alcohol. So in German, this is called Spitzname. Do you hear me, Swissies? Spitzname. In French it's called surnom and that's allowed. So they are, by law this is allowed to have a nickname. You know you can, you can see everywhere doctor, doctor rapper and doctor DJ and all these things you know. The Swiss it's all nepotism. They're all lying. You know you can see here they are, they're just looking for to put an immigrant in, into, into, the, into the prison. Into the box like you know. That's all they're looking for. They're a bunch of bold liars. Like Bill Cooper says, bold liars. Yeah. And they don't talk with a word about the things they did to us, you know. I've been inside the house for two years now. Before it wasn't rosy either. They, they broke my health, they took my boy away, they terrorized my children here. And you can see it, they even filmed it. And if you film them, 
They come with a terrorist squad and put three guns in your head because they don't want to be filmed. This is the center of evil. I know them now and I analyze them. So this is the first chapter. The first chapter, the, the, the second chapter. The first chapter was their terror. Then the second chapter that I show the world who they are and what they do. And there will be a third chapter. Watch it coming. By the way, I don't even know what they mean with racial discrimination. I think I read it somewhere else. Uh, I can't even take it serious and, and, and read the whole phone book they're sending me, you know. Um, so I think they meant, I read it somewhere, they meant that I, dis I, I racially discriminate the Swiss. Well, this is technically impossible because unfortunately we belong to the same race. I, Sean Ross, belong to the same race as the Swissies. We are whiteies. So this is technically impossible. Do you hear me, Swissies? So stop your lies. And um, yeah, this is, this is what happens. If you criticize them, if you analyze them, then they say, whoa, we poor Swiss, we are the victims, we are uh, racially discriminated by this awful foreigner. You know, that's what they do. So I'll show you the rest here. So I hear some more of the whole phone book they sent me. If you read too many, you can read it. Just punch pause. Um, if, I, if I would know how to do it, I would have uh, copied it like and put it in the computer and it would have been easy to show it, but I don't even know how to do it. I'm such a jerk with computers, really. They talk about YouTube, but they, apparently they don't like it, you know, they analyze everything, except when they come and ring at the door, the police was probably waiting around the corner, that's what they did before, in Utzenstorf, they did this before, they were there in two minutes, when another Swiss, a Swiss farmer, he aggressed me, and I didn't know yet, there you couldn't defend yourself, so... I folded the Swiss farmer, I folded him up like three times, if you know what I mean. I had to be operated twice. So I'm not afraid of them. So the Swiss Middle Ages are very much afraid of, the, uh, of YouTube and the new world, the modern world. Oh, they are afraid of this. It brings them out of the Middle Ages, you know. They analyze everything, except when they ring at the door and hit me. <laughs> There's nothing. They're, gonna, they're not going to write it in here. Oh no. So just punch pause if you want to read it. So this, this, this is just some of it. You know, they're talking about the Pharaoh show in German. <laughs> they didn't like that one. Well, do you hear me, Swissies? My analyze and telling about your history is a direct result of your terror. Do you understand that? Do you copy? You brought this onto yourself. And if you're gonna do more to me and my family, I tell you, thousands or ten, hundreds of thousands of people will know now. So no, think first what you do. Because this one, you're not going to put under the carpet anymore. Do you get me, Swissies? Well, what else to expect from a country and from a people that put lizards on their money? Green lizards. Cold green lizards. As cold as the snow in the Alps. As cold and criminal as their judiciary and their crimes against me and my family. You cold reptilians you are. Well, this is octagon. What proof do you need? So this here is just another warning of these Swiss terrorists. 
and as the uh, arrest of the um, anti-terrorist squad was and they did even worse things they did the Swiss it's really murder incorporated it is a warning and the murder threats I'm receiving of the Swiss police and the Swiss Justice Department what will happen next so together with the cat, what they uh, they chopped off his leg. Uh, here was another warning they gave me last year. This was from the biggest Swiss newspaper. The article about how they arrested me with an anti-terrorist squad. They put three guns on my head. They put a um, a bandage over my head, as in a uh, rendition of the CIA like. Uh, they were armed. Uh, men all over the place, shouts, threats, uh, handcuffs, footcuffs, and uh, later on they threatened they I got murder threats, you know, so that that I shouldn't talk about Switzerland on the internet. Uh, so, and they did far more worse, which I'm going to talk tell you about in the next vid. Um, I don't know what they're going to do next. But uh, they apparently gonna make true their uh, their threats and uh, trying to uh, to uh, what to do what they um, what they said. Well, this is Switzerland. For no reason at all, there was a cop who hit me for no reason at all. So I put them on the internet, and then they send an anti-terrorist squad. That's what they did. There was a warning. You can read all about it here. This is was in the biggest Swiss newspaper. Okay. Yeah. In Octogon, Switzerland, tens of thousands of asylum seekers have disappeared and vanished into thin air. And only in the year 2012, 3,000 vanished. Seeing the reality and Switzerland collaboration with the Nazis and even financing the Nazis and giving them Red Cross passport ports to escape through the red line to Argentina and Spain, it must be assumed that the Swiss murdered all these refugees and burned their bodies as in Auschwitz. Or does anyone think that thousands of refugees just left Switzerland after having paid enormous sums for their dangerous and long voyage into the promised land. No, not really, did they now? And in Switzerland it is impossible for an immigrant to hide or stay low because the Swiss survey all immigrants, call up the police all the time and where you can't live anonymously as in Paris for instance. So, though these guys are definitely not in Switzerland anymore, or at least not alive. With all those incessant ID controls on immigrants by the Swiss Nazi police and Swiss neighbours keep an eye on everything what's going on. I already gave you the proofs of how the Swiss are building three large concentration camps. They show all immigrants like uh, in the streets with, uh, as all sorts of animals and of tortured detention centers in Switzerland where many immigrants were murdered and how the Swiss Nazi police lies to put immigrants in prison upon orders by the Swiss Nazi Justice Department. The police arrest you for nothing, takes you in the car and then people just disappear. This happened to tens of thousands and they tried it with me too. So this was in the newspaper yesterday, uh, August the uh, 19th, in this newspaper here, as you can read here, August 19th, 2013. And here you can read the whole story if you like. And if you don't understand German, just look at the numbers of how many people just disappeared in a country where nobody can disappear. And certainly not tens of thousands. They know everything. They control everything here. The neighbours, the, the authorities, everything. It's unbelievable. Yesterday, on August 19th, 
2013, several Swiss ran over an Egyptian refugee on the Swiss motorway where they're doing 130 kilometers an hour. The man probably ran for his life trying to get away from abduction by a Swiss murder squad uh, from Octogon. The young man died, of course, and the Swiss he keeps silent and pretend to know nothing, as usual. I mean, you don't run on a high-speed motorway in the dark unless you have you have to because you're very frightened of something and someone chasing you. Octagon and the Swissy are masters in perfect crime and are incredible in keeping tight through the Swiss omerta of the world's greatest crime syndicate. So here you can see the whole article that was yesterday. Another one gone. So, in order to avoid uncontrollable events like on the motorway, they even force certain immigrants to live in bunkers high up in the Alps, miles away from the nearest village, where nobody can see what happens and where it's much easier to have them disappear with nearby incineration facilities where no one will smell a thing. So, again, this was in the newspaper. When was that? And, um, well, these are the type of Swiss Nazis who, uh, I mean, look at them. He looks very innocent, doesn't he? He uh, looks a bit like Teflon Tony, doesn't he? But they're not innocent. Oh, no. Oh, no. So here you can read the proofs about the Swiss uh, torture detention facilities where it's green. They, it's, uh, there's talk about the, uh, the torture of being, of putting people in cells where there's no, not enough oxygen being the O2T torture um, as in waterboarding. Even worse. So this is how they make people leave Switzerland and if they don't want well they find other ways to do it by terror and um, by plainly murdering them code O2T is the deprivation of oxygen to a near life threatening degree which is the easiest to regulate in order to create slow death lift. So I'll just punch pause if you want to read it. There you go. Just punch pause. This is what they're doing in Switzerland. The home of the Templars, Octogon. Switzerland, Octogon, their business is death. A few weeks ago, from September 6, 2012 until September 21, the huge Swiss army of the Nazi Templars of Octogon had the military exercise Stabilo Due going on based on preparing the military for police task, tasks concerning the flux of immigrants seeking asylum in Switzerland and concerning the social unrest in southern Europe due to the economical crisis. Now here we can see the oct octagon shape of the cheese. This is octogon. I suppose there's some more people who know now that this is Octogon. The Swiss criminals, the uh, Nazi Templars. Octogon.
where both problems were organized by the criminal Swiss banks anyway. And if a citizen of any of these targeted nations knocks on the door of the origins of their sufferings, namely Switzerland, then the Swiss Nazi-like reaction is aggressive and highly criminal, breaking all human rights treaties. You see the Swiss flags and the, um, and the Nazi-like writing at the right bottom? The Swiss banks offered a place for all worldwide dictators to put the money stolen of the national income of the oppressed people on a secret Swiss bank account so the dictator can buy more arms to terrorize his people. And Switzerland attracted the richest people in the world not to pay any more taxes in their homelands and instead paying a fraction of that in some Swiss low tax region, thus leading to extreme poverty in Greece and in Spain. And here we can see the Swiss Nazi police who always target uh, immigrants and foreigners. And, um, but the real torture of course starts inside in a very clean Swiss way where nobody can see it. And here the Swiss Nazi police, they plant something um, in the foreigner's bag. They did it with me too, they do this with everyone here in Switzerland. This, the Swiss Nazi police, they do these things all the time. Therefore, to counter the consequences and human miseries of Swiss organized crime, military exercise Stabilo Due had to take place. Stabilo means stability, with loads of sarcasm, and Duo means two. Now, if there's a stability two, there must be a stability one. And it's this we should be worried about. The typical Swiss euphemisms as clean, neutral and stability in a country that never speaks out its real intentions. So in conjunction with the Stabilo Due army exercise at exactly the right moment on September 26th 2012 the Swiss government officially approved the construction of three large concentration camps, also referred to as Stabilo Uno, uh, Stability One. So here we can read the word, uh, well this is in German, and uh, here we can read the word concentration camp, there it is, Konzentrationslager, and in the beginning there's the word Katzet which also means concentration camp at the top of the text here. So here it says, they're going to build concentration camps. Nobody's going to do anything. Stability, sta billo, or sta luck. A sta luck or straflager is the German word for concentration camp. As uh, the word for Auschwitz was a stalag. The Swiss say that to begin with, they put the immigrants in there who don't obey the Swiss. The government, the SVP Nazi party and the Swiss people apply the word renitent, which means to oppose the will or wish of another person. That's what the dictionary says. Or not, and, and not obey. Now here we can read it. You're going to build concentration camps. That's uh, the Stabilo Uno. Oh. So it openly says here in the Swiss newspaper, just as open as Adolf Hitler wrote in Mein Kampf about the murder of the Jews, that any immigrant who will not follow the will of the Swiss master race will end up in a concentration camp that the Swiss must be obeyed. And with the Swiss Nazi Templar police and jurisdictional authorities, false evidence and false witnesses are traditionally planted in order to incarcerate immigrants, as they did deliberately with Mr. Sean Ross on several occasions and thousands of others. And the Swiss prisons are absolutely full with innocent foreigners, 
in already existing Swiss detention torture centers, where immigrants are being suicided by the thousands and man many people have disappeared. So here we can read it. Just put on the pause. Let me slowly read it. Well, this is just the tip of the iceberg. You know, Switzerland is so clean and they hide everything. It's so clean and they smile so nice, you know. Just as Hitler did, the criteria for ending up in a Swiss concentration camp start below. Start luck. So just as Hitler did, the criteria of ending up in a Swiss concentration camp, Stalag or Stabilo, will be set down even more upon the moment of inauguration. So this is uh, what a German concentration camp looked like in 1933 in the beginning. Uh, it looked like a training camp in the beginning, the very beginning. Well, we all know what it, what it ended up with and how it looked like. So are we going to let the Swiss do what they want? Then together with Stabilo Uno, the construction of concentration camps in Switzerland, and Stabilo Due, the army exercise, there is Stabilo 3 or Stability 3 in Switzerland. The burning of asylum seeker centers as on February the 25th, 2010 in Kaplan, as we can see here. And uh, well, it says it was arson. Twenty six people got injured pretty bad. So here we can see some of the injured people. And this year it's even worse. There were at least seven arsons in asylum seeker centers. Uh, and a lot of casualties. And here as well on January the 10th this year 2012 in Bermansdorf, Switzerland. It's a sort of a weird title you know like uh, it's the foreigners again who did it you know. Maybe we can read it. So the, t the title says the foreigners did it again, you know, they can't behave. And here it says the, um, the reason of the fire has, has not been uh, concluded yet. You know, it's, all, it's always the same. They don't know how it started. Yeah. So this year again, one month later, on February the 13th, 2012, in Wilmergen, Switzerland, uh, many people got injured. About every week here in Switzerland, uh, immigrants and asylum seekers have to jump out of the second or third floor of a burning building. And the police always says, well, it happened in the kitchen. It's the Oriental cooking who did it. Yeah. So this is this newspaper here, you can read the date, you can look at oh, this burning. Well this is Switzerland. And uh, they all they all work together, the police, the arsonists, the Nazis, the jurisdictional authorities, the politicians. They all work nicely together in Switzerland. Oh boy, they like burning down things, you know. And a couple of weeks later, in the same month of 2012 in Switzerland, again on February the 22nd in Frauenfeld, Switzerland, another asylum seeker center mysteriously burned down. Here we can see it. So, this is the newspaper, you can read the date. And they never know who did it, you know, it's always the same.
It was oriental cooking of the foreigners and the immigrants because uh, you should do Swiss cooking apparently. Well, here we can read it again how the people were sleeping, but still the cooking was going on. They say the oriental cooking, but they were sleeping. Yeah. Very lucky. Happens every week in Switzerland. So here we can see it burning. Switzerland burning of the asylum seekers, centers. Well, this is the real Switzerland. Oh. This is the real Switzerland. It's not a clean place. And here again, only a couple of weeks later, on March the 2nd, 2012, in Switzerland, Milan, another asylum seeker center burns down. And the big Swiss newspapers, they don't even mention it with one single word. It's only the Swedish newspaper 20 Minutes who does so. So this is Switzerland. Nice and clean and neutral. We never do anything wrong. At least, well, nobody knows it. You see? And here you can read it. Another word in the international media. But every week, some immigrants have to jump down from the second or the third floor. And a lot of them, they got injured for life. Nice Switzerland. A month later, or two, again in uh, Switzerland, a fire in a uh, asylum seeker center in Landquart in Graubünden on July the 15th, 2012. And it's funny, here the police says it was arson. Usually they don't. Well, maybe, because this is another canton. It's called Graubunde. It is a bit different. Uh, they're not entirely Swiss German here. I see. Uh -huh. And here we can see it again, the, uh, the arson in Landquart. And two months later, again, on October the 6th, 2012, in Hohenrein, Luzern, Switzerland, another asylum seeker center burned down. And again, people got uh, sincerely injured. A guy had to jump from the third floor. Here we can see the date when it happened. Yeah, we can all read it. Just push the pause button yeah. and again you know it uh, must have been the oriental cooking you know I'll show you how it burnt here we can see how it's burning okay well here we can see it burn again and the newspaper or the police or whatever, you know, they're asking for witnesses because they can't find any. Usually with any crime, they find, they're in Switzerland, they always find lots of witnesses. There's always some Swiss who saw it, you know, and he saw some foreigner doing it. And here, with these sort of things, they never find any witnesses. Well, here it says, they're looking for witnesses. Well, they won't find any, <laughs> I, I, yeah, I know that. Uh, it's the laws of silence in Switzerland. Uh, they only see something when a foreigner did it, or not even did it. And there were many more asylum seeker centers being burned down this year with many casualties and wounded, to which the Swiss Nazi police only says that the arson was caused by oriental cooking of the foreigner himself and the Swiss left wing is non-existent as you can see on the picture here, you see the Swiss, the Swiss flag concerning human rights they are non-existent 
non-existent, the Swiss left wing, concerning human rights matters, as they nourish the very same right wing idea behind thoughts as the rest of Octogon. The Swiss left wing pretenders only differ with the right wing about how tax money and BNP is going to be divided. Nothing more. The whole idea of concealing the real intentions of being transported to a concentration camp is very Swiss and not very German. So the victims don't fight for their lives. Oh, you just have to take a train there and then everything will be okay. And you can eat, have a bed and a shower. And until the shower opened up, it was too late. And before that, everyone had hopes. Yeah. So here we can see some Swiss posters which are shown in the streets this year. There's even an email. This is Switzerland. You know, somebody do something. See the black uniforms and the guy with no hair? Uh, Swiss Nazi police. The Swiss enjoy to play with the uh, victim sufferings. They really enjoy that. Switzerland is like next door's serial killer who's clean, low profile, neutral, who's always smiling and who does a lot of social engagement for the community like working for the Red Cross but having a very big seller. Today, October 15th, 2013, another asylum seeker home burned down in Switzerland. And while the rubbles are still smoking, the Swiss Nazi police says, Oh, it was a short circuit. The very same thing they always say, it was an electrical so short circuit. There must have some wizard there who can immediately see through smoke and coal that it was an accident. While well, even electrical short circuits can be the result of sabotage by some Swiss Nazis, the more the asylum seeker homes burn all the time in Switzerland. It happens about every month, which I already showed you in another video some time ago. Now you can read that. You can see the date in the newspaper. I'm tired of showing what's really happening here in Switzerland because the Nazi state of Switzerland stands above all laws and can do how it pleases nobody intervenes they sign all the international agreements including those concerning asylum seekers and then the Swiss make sure they will leave by themselves through organized terror and make sure that no complaints by a foreigner or immigrant gets treated by the Swiss Nazi judiciary. So there will never be any international follow-up like in Strasbourg European Court. The Swiss, they bow for the wealthy and powerful and they spit on the poor and the defenseless. There you can read the whole story. This is the name of the newspaper it was in, it's called 20 Minutes. Nice, charming country. In the year 1776 a lot of peculiar things happened in the world that laid the foundation for many years ahead and being in direct relation with each other. On May 1st, 1776, Adam Weishaupt founded the Illuminati in Ingolstadt Bavaria, Germany, where today the Illuminati car Audi with its Vesica Peitsch's Illuminati symbol in its logo is being produced. You know, the four rings, see my other video. And only two months later, on July 4th, 1776, the US Declaration of Independence by the same Freemasons became official as the new system of equally pharisocratic Freemasonry replaced the old system of the same aristocracy, where monarchy ruled and the New World Order rule is being set in place through each 
each lodge ruling over a certain region, province, state or country. In this case the Illuminati chosen to exert an important role in the new world making them no more important than other important lodges as Le Neuf Sœur over France and the Scottish Rite over the UK. It's just hierarchy and all Freemasons will always be brothers no matter which lodge they're in. So the Illuminati are not more or more dangerous than other lodges but only have another territory assigned to. That's all really. So here we're in the small village of Lengnau uh, and uh, here it says Lengnau and in Eng Endingen and Lengnau in 1776 the, uh, the Jews could only live in Switzerland and these two villages they were kicked out everywhere else and they had to uh, to wear some special markings like like in the Second World War yeah. and here in this very small village there's even a big synagogue which is quite special there with this yeah. so in the um, later on the 19th century uh, there were no more Jews in the whole of Switzerland. You know, what well, Switzerland is from the Templars, you know. So, 1776 is quite a special date because this is the, uh, it also has to do with the American independence and uh, the revolution. And it is the, uh, uh, the Illuminati were founded by Adam Weishaupt in the, in the south of Germany in, um, in Ingolstadt, the Illuminati. So it's all the same date. A lot of things happened. So all the Jews in Switzerland, they could only live in these two towns. They were like a, like a ghetto, if you want. So here you can read in English, and here in German. In German, English, just punch force. So the first Jew who was here was in 1622, it says. Oh, amazing, in a little village like this. Yeah. Then at the Templars base Octagon, that gives all the orders to the worldwide web of Freemason rule of the fair aristocracy, it had always been a rule that Switzerland, the motherland, should always safeguard the more concentrated form and spirit of the pharaohs and the sisters of Isis. And therefore, as a direct result of the other Templar Freemason 1776 happenings, that all Jews in the very base of Octagon were to be confined to the two northern towns in Switzerland of Lengnau and Endingen, only in order to keep the most important base clean and under total pharaonic domination, not even allowing another philosophy, tradition, way of thinking or behaving, the way things have always been in the land of Pharaoh. And just as Switzerland has always been, where being different is a reason for persecution and terror. And today in the racist country of Switzerland, the same things are going on today, only in a more far more hidden way but they kill they execute they terrorize they mark people uh, yeah well i know i understand what it's what it should be like to be persecuted as a jew or a negro i've been both for 16 years here in switzerland and yes, they terrorized the Jews by threatening them with being burned at the stakes as it was practiced in Switzerland until 1782 and almost within the 19th century. So imprisoned in these ghettos, all Jews had to wear a yellow hat called the Rota and a yellow circle on their breasts. And as these villages were chosen on purpose right on the German border, only 10 kilometers away, all Jews were finally driven out of Switzerland were not murdered before. At the beginning, so at the beginning of the 19th century, Switzerland was again Judenrein, as the Swiss say. 
cleansed of Jews, and all of them had left uh, many making it for the uh, Americas. So here you can see this uh, typical circle. And here's the typical hat. Here's again this circle here. And in fact, this was also the part, the part of the plan to chase people out of Europe for religious persecution. As the New World Order needed immigrants, settlers and labour to build up the New World and next plan of the fair aristocracy. And in fact, today we can see the very same things happening in Octagon, Switzerland, as immigrants are being chased out of Switzerland by means of organized Swiss terror and Swiss Nazi politics and corrupt liar authorities, all for the same reason that the main pharaonic base in the world accepts only one predominantly set of mind, accepting only obedience to the hidden forces within Octagon, Switzerland. Huh. It's interesting, Fleur de Lys, symbol of the aristocracy, the fair aristocracy, here in Endingen. So this is one of the two villages, Endingen and Lengnau. So here is the Jewish cemetery with a lot of obelisks. And uh, it's in between the two villages where the Jews in 1776 were banned too. Here you can read in English. This is the oldest Jewish cemetery in uh, Switzerland. Well, there are no more Jews apparently here. They all went back to Zurich. In these two villages. So here you can see, before we were at this village, and now we're going, there's the cemetery, and there's the other village, real next to each other. So I, I think that the, the date of 17, 1776 uh, is quite uh, it's quite interesting. So, well, let's have a look. Let's get in. So here's the cemetery. It's a nice cemetery, very special. I can see the first obelisk there. There it is, pharaohs. Therefore, Swiss politics needs criminals and no other country will interfere, except maybe some rogue US agencies, maybe. I hope so. Look, this sort of filth is coming into the, uh, into the mailbox here. It's all over, in the streets, everywhere. All Nazi propaganda. Um, these are today's Jews. Oh. You know, racist persecution. I'm one of them here. You know. yeah, an unwanted criminal. These are the th same things they did with the Jews. And um, you know, they say, well, they're all criminals and they're dangerous. They kill children, all these things. It's the same thing going on today. You know, I'm not Jewish. I'm a South African. I'm a white South African. And I'm fed up with it. I open up my mouth and um, they're really begging for it. You know what I mean? They're begging for it. And um, yeah, so I know it's the same thing they did in history. They, they say, well, all my life I've, I've been, um, I've, 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 I always avoided criminals and crime. And here they just turn me into a criminal. The same thing they did in the Middle Ages with the Jews. I fully understand this. I fully understand what happened. I had to experience this here for 16 years. And the Swiss always clean, of course. Well, they're the biggest criminals you can imagine. Now, the biggest crime against humanity. Now, this thing goes real deep. So this, this is the same thing as the, the yellow star and the yellow hat, the rota that the Jews had to wear. You know, well, I'm, I'm, I've been wearing one here since 16 years. See what I mean? You know, so I understand history. I understand the Second World War. You know? I've been living through, through three world wars like here. And I haven't hit back yet. Well, there's a lot of barbed wire actually. 
Oh, why, why the barbed wire? Full of it. Why? It's a bit dodgy. So here we can see that Switzerland already practiced yellow Nazi markings for Jews in, in 1776. And if there would have been Negroes, Asians, other immigrants and races at that time, they too would have been forced these yellow Swiss markings for non-Swiss. And in fact the Swiss already executed this practice in the Middle Ages, which started in and around the founding of Octagon by the Templars on August 1st, 1291, right after the Crusades. An obelisk, pharaohs, the joining, Freemasons, Bloch. Oh, a little castle. Why do you need a castle in your grave? Oh. It is a beautiful cemetery, I think. I've never seen a nice cemetery like this, I must admit. Not that I would spend my holiday here. Yeah? Obelisks, pharaohs. So here are a lot of obelisks, but not all of them. So I don't think all of them are pharaohs. Just the ones who put an obelisk. Only a pharaoh can put an obelisk on his grave. Yeah. I mean, the pharaohs rule everywhere, also over the Hebrew people, just as they rule over Germany, the US, and here in Switzerland is probably the highest, most of them here, the highest concentration of pharaohs. There are not as many as in Luzern and in Bern. So this practice of yellow markings on Jews is not a German idea at all, but it is Nazi Templar stuff from Octagon, Switzerland, that existed already in the Middle Ages, long before Mr. Hitler and his Swiss financing Nazis. And the Swiss are doing it again today, stigmatizing foreigners and immigrants, as we can see in the streets here and in newspapers on t television. They're working towards something again and the whole world is looking at it and nobody is doing a thing. Well, I open up my mouth, you understand? And no Swiss is going to stop me from opening my mouth. They can even come again with their justice department and their Nazi police from stopping me making my films. But I open up my mouth. You hear me, Swissies? These are the sort of things the Swiss Nazis are working towards again with their stigmatizing of immigrants and they have an enormous impact on other Nazis now in Russia and in Germany and in France using the same um, uh, Swiss People's Party um, caric caricatures. So uh, the Swiss are walk working towards this, which was in fact the Swiss idea of the Nazi Templars in the first place. People wake up and stop them. So this is more like Pharaonic here. And this one here. Well, it's freshly dug out. Let's see if I sink away on it. Fresh. I sink away for an inch here.
I can almost feel a hand grabbing my foot. The other gravestones are, are nice looking, except the obelisks. It says here rests Guggenheim, the kings, it says kings, Königen von Endingen. That's one of the villages here. The kings of Endingen. Endingen, yeah. That's, well, that's why we just saw the Fleur d'Alice, eh? Pharaohs with an obelisk. These are pharaohs. Yeah. The kings of Endingen. And the custom is even older than that, and not even European. In the year 717, the Caliph of Baghdad ordered the Jews to wear a, and the Christians to wear a yellow belt and a yellow rota hat in a specific conic form. In 850, the Caliph al Mutawakil, and in 807, the Caliph Harun al Rashid, and all the others followed. So here you can read this. So this is not German at all, folks. It isn't. The Germans were in a dictatorship by the Nazi Templars from Octagon, Switzerland. They didn't have any, any other possibility than follow it. Well, many of them did, but most of them didn't even want this. It was a, a, a dictatorship for the Europeans by the pharaohs and the fair aristocracy. Um, so this is where it comes from, really. Yeah, it's also in Wikipedia and here in Muslim countries that it came out of the Muslim world. There's a lot of information about it actually. Uh, you can find it out yourself. Right, here's some more. And this is what these hats look like. It looks like a UFO with an antenna. Beep beep. Now, why always the color yellow? Because yellow is haram and forbidden for a Muslim man and supposed to be a feminine homosexual color. While the color pink is okay for Muslim men. There is a hadith or interdiction number 5173 till 5178 in the book 24 of the hadith saying that yellow is the color of the kafar or disbelievers. This is why in the Muslim world, Jews and Christians were stigmatized and discriminated to wear these yellow garments and markings. So the yellow markings of the Jews in the Middle Ages were not a European idea. And the yellow star of David during the Nazi terror was not a German idea. The whole concept was from Islam by the Muslims and imported by the Swiss Nazi Templars during the Crusades, who also betrayed the European, German, French and English Crusaders to Saladin, when they had the Templars' treasure safely brought into Switzerland. So this thing is going very deep, folks. So you can read the whole Hadid. Uh, how do you like my Muslim pronunciation? Hadid. Nice, eh? And these aristocratic Templars got in fact along very well with the Nizari Ismaili or Nizaria sect, better known under the name of the Hashashin, where our word assassin comes from. They were founded in, in 1080 by Hassani Sabah, about the same time as the Templars, for the same specific reason an enemy within sort of special forces being more a bunch of pharaonic backstabbers than true fighters. Very similar to the SS and the Nazis. And also here the Nazi-Islam connection gets real where the Palestinian leader Mufti Husseini was the head of an entire German SS division of 26,000 men of entirely Muslims killing Europeans and Jews for Hitler. This was 
SS Division Hanjar, which is the name for a bent rounded Muslim round sword, just as the Shriners have. While the Templar Nazis told the Germans what they wanted to hear and you had to be blonde, blue eyes, blue eyed and Nordic and they told the guys in the SS Muslim division the exact opposite. So this is all in Wikipedia, you can find it yourself. Yeah. It's all over. Mr. Hitler, in fact, talked a lot about Islam, and um, here are some of the uh, of the things he said. He said uh, there are loads of things actually. He said the Muslim religion too would have been much more compatible to us than Christianity. Why did it have to be Christianity with its meekness and flabbiness? And um, during a meeting at the Wehr Werwolf. On the afternoon of uh, August 27, 1942, he said uh, that Christianity is something well of insipid. We would have better received Islam. Those doct doctrines of the reward, reward of heroism, combatants, combatants on, alone have the seventh heaven. With that, the Germans would have conquered the world. It's only by Christianity that we have been held distant. There are many people who believe that Mr. Hitler was in fact a Muslim. Well, I explain you this. For Templars and for Freemasons, as Mr. Hitler was, it's the same thing. As in every free Freemason temple, uh, temple or lodge, you can find a Bible, a Koran and a Torah. For them, it's all the same. So the fact that Hitler is talking about Islam, it, uh, it's another proof that in fact he, is a free ma he was a Freemason. And again, only a Freemason and a Templar, a Nazi Templar from Octagon, Switzerland could say a thing like this. Because for them it's all the same. It's for the Pharaohs, it doesn't matter to what religion you belong. But you can see that he uh, despised of the Germans. You can see this, really. And, well, that's what he did. He destroyed Germany. He was the enemy within, with his obelisks and, and Freemason handshakes he was doing. The enemy within. He wanted to destroy Europe and, uh, well, get the Muslims here. And, and again, this is not the fault of the Muslims themselves. They are misled, just as anybody else. We're all misled by them, by the pharaohs, by the pharaohistocracy, and the Templar Nazis. We're all misled, all peoples, all religions, and all races. And here's Mr. Hitler in Zurich, where he got financed by the Swiss. And all these Swiss sort of so-called commissions for the truth, they all end up like that Switzerland is so neutral and so innocent and they never done anything. Eh? So here we can see uh, Mr. Hitler together with a Palestinian during the Second World War, before the Second World War. And this Palestinian, his name is Mufti Amin Al-Husseini. He was the biggest hero of, uh, of Yasser Arafat. So long, long, long before the State of Israel the Palestinians already wanted to murder all the Jews. There are many pictures of Mr. Al Husseini actually. So here again is the uh, the Islam Nazi connection. And again, it's only the uh, the Pharaonic leaders. Here are two Pharaonic leaders. So people wake up. Muslims wake up, Jews wake up, uh, Christians, white people, Asians, Negroes, everybody wake up because we're all brothers and sisters. We have to get rid of the enemy within. 
Is that clear to you? They're probably the oldest ones here. Special. I've never seen a cemetery like that. Very special. And this is how sly the Templar Nazis from Octagon, Switzerland really are. Palestinian Mufti Husseini of the Islamic SS division was the greatest hero of Yasser Arafat, who was another Palestinian whom the Swiss from Octagon declared poisoned by polonium on November the 6th, 2013, only a few days ago. Again, these Swiss Templar Nazis who know perfectly well that this announcement will stir up the Middle East again and will bring fire, death and destruction to the, to the entire region. This is the way the Swiss from Octagon work, so their banks can make a lot of money again. We all know that the Swiss are not very honest at all, don't care about justice at all and are very racist, so it can be assumed that their announcement is everything else than human compassion and a sense for justice. Their aim is to stir up the region and bring profit to their criminal Swiss banks. This so-called legal medicine of Lausanne University in Switzerland knows very well that immigrants die all over in Swiss torture detention centers. But instead of analyzing that, they prefer bringing deliberate hatred into the Middle East. This is so typical for Switzerland and their so-called neutrality swindle while collaborating with the biggest crimes against humanity that, had, that, that have ever been perpetrated against mankind. So you can read the whole article. Again, made in Switzerland. They export crime and war and racism. That's what they do. Just as on February 2nd, 1939, the Swiss enforced all Jews in Switzerland to have a stamp with the letter J on it. And they forced all Jewish men, the name Israel, and for all women, the name Sarah, in front of their entire name on their identity cards and passports. Another Swiss Templar's idea, the German Nazis welcomed and copied. So here we can read it about the J stamp of the Swiss authorities. It was a Swiss invention you know, by this Heinrich Rotmund. That was the guy who gave all the the Red Cross passes in Bern. I already made that film about that. Uh, to on uh, he gave that to um, real war criminals. So you can read the whole article. It says the criminals were Swiss. It's another guy who who got terrorized by the Swiss, and uh, because he he wrote these things, he 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 digged. Uh, he was digging in it in the Swiss history, and this is not. Uh, it gets revenged, these sort of things, by the Swiss. <laughs> yeah, the tree has grown over it. Like in Angkor in... What is it? Cambodia. Cambodia. <laughs> Special. Eaten by a, by a tree. Then people had to wear a yellow star on the breast and today entire blocks in European cities show the same yellow haram color where European disbelievers are not even allowed access anymore. But of course it's not the ordinary Muslim who's doing this. It's only the followers of the same pharaohs as in the West who, who also rule in Islam by divide and rule, setting people and fractions up against each other. I met in my life some fine Muslims who helped me, fed me and gave me shelter. So now we understand why the color yellow. It's, it's probably some pharaonic thing somewhere. I should analyze this. 
And also in the Muslim world, these pharaohs rule, like the king of Saudi Arabia, who collaborated with Hitler, the Nazis, Roosevelt and the British aristocracy all together. These muftis of the SS, all these Arab dictators and caliphs who forced others to wear yellow markings, just as these pharaohs rule in the Western world and the entire planet. We the people, no matter your color, race or religion, should unite against the real enemy of mankind together and wake up to the fact that the fair aristocracy and the Nazi Templars of Octagon are very real. These pharaohs in the Alps once want to bring war into the world because the end of their banks is near. So they will stir up the Middle East first, as they're trying now. The beast of the Alps has been detected and therefore gets real unpredictable now. These are the Nazi Templars of Octagon, the Beast of the Alps. During the Falkland War, um, quite a few British soldiers they got shot to pieces with this Swiss armory. This is a 35mm gun, shooting about a thousand rounds a minute, if you consider the two barrels. It's uh, Switzerland, and 35mm. Uh, Some soldiers, they they got shot to pieces literally when their bodies exploded taking in a 35 millimeter cannon round in their bodies and a harrier got shot down so how is it possible this so-called neutral country <laughs> is killing British soldiers an RAF harrier was shot down by these cannons over Goose Green on May 27th the system was also employed in direct fire mode against British paratroopers during the Battle of Goose Green, killing two and wounding eleven and stopping the advance of two companies. So here's the Swiss Ehrlichan 35mm uh, Skyguard weapon that was used not only as an AA but against uh, human bodies, soldiers. So your whole body will explode if you get hit by one of those. So that happened to two British soldiers who got shot to pieces, literally, by Swiss weapons of Octagon, Switzerland, the Erlingen Nazi uh, weapon manufacturer is still killing people. So in fact, without Switzerland and the very sophisticated Swiss Erlingen weapons as the Sky Guard, these young British soldiers would still be alive and with their families and Swiss weapons are responsible for their death just as Erlikon already had massive quantities of weapons and ammunition produced for the Nazis during World War II and just as the Swiss pro-Nazi pro Red Cross gave thousands of Red Cross passes to German Nazis like Mengele, Barbie, Eichmann and thousands of others so they could escape through the red line to, yes, Argentina again. The same Argentina as from the Falkland War. So during the Falkland War, young British soldiers died because of the Nazi connection. Switzerland, Argentina, being shot to pieces with 35mm Swiss weaponry. Switzerland, where the British royal family are having their annual ski holiday in Klosters. And don't give a damn that some members of their royal regiment get shot to pieces with weapons from the same neutral country 
where they enjoy their holidays inside the Nazi connection. Well, who cries about a few British subjects anyway? We'll give them a military funeral, a medal and one of our royal smiles. And they'll forget it all. Most important are the international relations with Octogon, our holiday resort and where we've got our wealth stashed inside the Swiss caves of Octogon. Well, here we can see the uh, the funeral of Margaret Thatcher, who gave the orders to the Falkland War on a Freemason checkerboard, and in the middle is the, is the symbol of Octogon of Switzerland, of the Templars. And here too is the Octogon symbol at Margaret Thatcher's funeral. I mean, what warrior takes orders from a woman like that? I mean, what thing is it anyway of all those sort of warriors or soldiers or whatever they are taking orders from just one woman? to kill their brothers in another uniform. Well, what kind of a thing is this? This is this is not the thing that a warrior does. You know, it's only soldiers. Just wannabe warriors who watch too many Hollywood movies and they think they're a superhero. But they get shot to pieces anyway by a 35mm Swiss Skyhawk Skyguard uh, cannon by Erlikon by of the Nazis. I already showed you a film or two, several films about the uh, the symbols on the Swiss money, but I discovered now something. This is huge. So I showed you my other films: the aliens here, the octagon symbol, and there are many more here. The uh, the DNA helix. This is the dollar, the one dollar, the famous one dollar bill. To have a comparison. Uh, I want you to watch carefully the 50 francs bill. Um, this is amazing. Um, there's also a guy who made, who made a very good video about the old 10 francs or franken. If you, yeah, the franken bill from, from the 70s where it's already showing Nibiru and planets. Um, there's a guy who made a very good video about this. I think he's uh, an American guy. You can find it in YouTube. So watch the uh, the 50 francs uh, bill very carefully. There's also a, a 200 franc bill and a thousand franc bill. Maybe you can look it up yourself in Google Images and analyze it because I, I, I don't I really don't see everything it's it's this it's so much and it's so hidden now watch this very carefully it's green is that a lizard with his eyes there and a lot of sixes and a vortex coming out of its mouth So here it is again on Google Images. I tell you all folks, in Switzerland there's something terribly wrong. And it's people don't behave as normal human beings should. Inhuman and cold are their crimes against humanity throughout history. And their sly financial institutions rule the world. Yes, the inhabitants of Octogon literally worship money and gold. So no wonder that on their token of worship for more disturbing proofs, symbols and strange entities can be found of a world we humans have no idea about. And also this is hidden, as everything is hidden in Octogon. 
I looked at this Swiss 50 francs or 50 franken bill hundreds of times at least and didn't see it until yesterday when I was tired and looked at this image in the, in the internet with a different intensity probably and then I saw it a blatant green reptilian for the worshipping of their masters or is it the Swiss themselves did they mix with this being is it Baphomet of the Templars who founded Switzerland in the last year of the Crusades in 1291 here are the eyes slightly at the side of the head yeah just as reptilians are they have this like the images show on the side of the head yeah. as reptilians do yeah green as a lizard and some vortex full of sixes and vesica pitches shooting out of its mouth yeah a lot of sixes and a uh, vortex and a uh, Here's the Vesica Pitches out of a mud, out of here, sort of a nose, and here's a. It's, it's like coming out here. And, and look at the head here. This. The front. Yeah. Well, this is Switzerland. Here are the eyes. Oh, well, there it is again. Look here, you can see the, uh, like this thing here, where the eyes, the what, what's what's on the bill, these markings on the bill, the eyes are at the side of their head on the bill, this funny form here where the nose is and the mouth is, it's also on the bill, the green collar, <laughs> this is, you know, octagon of the Alps, eh? Creepy place. And these lines here over the head, a part of the skull, are very much um, shown at the Swiss 50 francs bill and the eyes at the side of the, uh, of the skull. They're very distinctive here. It's one of the distinctive marks. And it's on the, on the bill, eh? So here's one of their older Swiss 50 francs bills. The owl, one of the symbols of the Freemasons, the star of uh, the hexagram, and this is Fleur de Lys, the symbol of the fair aristocracy. And there's much more to see. So here's our old 50 francs with a uh, with an owl, symbol of the Freemasons, the uh, hexagon in it and this is Fleur de Lys, the symbol of the fair aristocracy. Yeah. Some nice claws. This is their older 10 francs of Switzerland. The 10 francs bill with the Nibiru in it and planets. Uh, we should see the other side as well. There's a good video about this. And there's much more to see on their paper bills I'm sure. In Octogon, in the Alps, the country of stealth and the occult or hidden behind clean, sly and sterile diplomacy. I apologize to y'all for not seeing this reptilian before, but it's also hidden behind the lies. There's so many things to see and I just don't see it all. So here's another old 100 francs where they show the octagon in the middle and here another old thousand francs of Switzerland here's another older thousand francs today's thousand francs oh, weird stuff on it what's that? This is a, it's a man Part man, oh. today's 200 francs. There's also part of the 200 francs the other side. Some older 100 francs, and it's today 100 francs as I showed you before. 
weird creatures here. And here, one of their old 50s with some funny Babylonian creature with a human head. So if you punch 50 Franken in Google Images, a whole lot of them pop out. So maybe someone else will feel inspired to make a video with real creepy music and special effects about, about the Swiss reptilian money. Evil in the Alps is very real and in Octagon evil gets worshipped. So maybe the one dollar bill with its images is nothing yet compared with octagon lizard money from octagon. Compared to this the dollar looks quite innocent. And even the sweets, the candy comes in a uh, octagon shaped box. Look all the the red cross and the Swiss flag, look at it. It all comes with a cross in it. Hmm. Templar sweeties.